Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is a warning to Canon. Now, back in September of 2022, Canon put out a statement telling third party lens manufacturers to stop producing unauthorized autofocus RF lenses. Now, at that time, there were only a few companies making such lenses, but the backlash was immediate. The comment sections lit up with amateur and pro photographers vilifying Canon for their decision, and I think those criticisms are warranted, but also short sighted. Now, I personally think Canon will announce third party lens support, but the way they've been handling the situation, which is to say nothing, isn't helping their cause at all. But more on that in just a minute. Now, let me tell you a story from my time working as a camera salesperson at Allen's Camera. Whenever someone came in to purchase an entry-level DSLR from Nikon or Canon, it generally came with the basic 18 to 55 kit lens. And we all know that the 18 to 55 kit lens is pretty much garbage, but when someone new came to buy a camera, they were focused on the body and not the lenses. So I did my best to quickly educate them on the importance of glass. Remember, glass, 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 glass. But it wasn't easy to explain to someone that the lenses can actually be more expensive than the camera itself. So what I did is I showed them the kit lens on the camera, then I would go grab a third party Sigma 17 to 50 2.8 and let them put that on the camera and look through the viewfinder. They instantly said, wow, it's so much brighter than the other one. Why is that? I would keep it basic. This one lets in more light. It's slightly more expensive, but it will make your life so much easier and help you get better pictures quickly. Sure, the 17 to 50 2.8 was around $379, and the kit lens either came for free or was only 99 bucks, but the Canon and Nikon 17 to 55 2.8s were all over a thousand bucks, and someone just starting out didn't need that. The point I'm making with this story is that third-party lenses were and still are integral pieces to the puzzle for so many photographers, new and old. I always felt that the key to a customer not returning their camera after a week and saying that my camera sucks was always better glass. They don't need to know why their pictures are better at 2.8 just yet. They can learn all of that in the future. All they need to know is they are getting better pictures than with the crappy kit lens. And that brings us back to today and comments like this. I love Canon, been using them for years, but when they announced they weren't going to support third party lenses, I knew it was time to say bye. And so today I bought the A7 IV instead of going with the R6 Mark II, even though the R6 had everything I wanted. Being limited to their RF lenses killed it for me. Not all of us are pros that can just throw money at lenses. Now that's from an amateur, but this next statement is from a pro that I was having a conversation with. Canon made it so that third party manufacturers can't produce RF mount lenses, is that correct? Now that's a wow right there. Even a pro is confused by Canon's stance on third party lenses. Canon is facing a PR nightmare of their own making. By not clarifying their statement and actions, they are creating ill will with new and old, as well as amateur and pro photographers. And I don't think it needs to be this way. Here's my take, and I said it back in September. Canon will open their mount up to third party lens manufacturers like Sigma and Tamron at some point. I've shown how well older third party EF lenses adapt to the RF cameras, so we all know that they work and they work really well. Now here's why I think Canon made the decision to clamp down on third party RF lenses from companies like Viltrox and Rokinon as well as Sam Yang. Let me make this clear. This is my opinion. I do not speak for Canon. I think Canon simply didn't want subpar quality and subpar autofocusing lenses to lead to bad customer experiences with their cameras. The last thing you want people doing is complaining that their cameras suck when the facts are it's the unapproved third party lenses. And that's why Canon chose to tell the likes of Viltrox to cease and desist. In my opinion, there's one thing Canon can do to stop the bleeding. They need to make a development announcement 
that in 2023, Sigma and Tamron will start developing lenses for the RF mount. Now, I chose Sigma and Tamron because they've made EF lenses in the past and both make E-mount lenses for Sony. And right now, Tamron is making lenses for Nikon's Z-mount. And I expect Sigma to start to do the same sometime soon. But more importantly, they need to give newer lens manufacturers a roadmap to RF approval. Announce that there's a path to the Canon stamp of approval, even if you make it almost impossible to meet. At least it looks like you're trying to be inclusive. Hell, some of these new companies might surprise you and be able to meet those standards. At least give them a shot. It only makes sense that Canon prefers photographers use genuine Canon lenses on their RF bodies. They make more money when they buy Canon lenses. And as of late, Canon has done a better job of bringing less expensive RF options to the market with many more sure to come in the future. But by cutting off your nose to spite your face, you're only hurting yourself. When a third party option saves you hundreds of dollars, some photographers are more than willing to make small sacrifices to save some money. And the fact is, many of these lenses will get the job done and get it done well. Better glass, more times than not, leads to the potential for better photos, even for new photographers. And a photographer who's getting better pictures is a photographer who's less likely to give up and more likely to upgrade their camera and lenses in the future and stick with the same brand. Now, in closing, I think what Canon has done with the RF cameras has put them in the lead. They have great options for full frame as well as cropped sensors. Their autofocus is top notch from the cheapest entry level RF cameras to the most expensive ones. And they shoot fast with both the mechanical and electronic shutters and the quality is great. When someone asks me which brand they should go with from Nikon, Canon, or Sony, at this point, it's simple. I say Canon for so many reasons, but not everyone can drop bank on the current better RF glass. And if someone's on a tighter budget, maybe Sony with their third-party options from Sigma and Tamron might be a better starting point. Look, it's time, Canon. It's time to announce third-party lens support is on the way. That's what I have to say, guys. Let me know what you think down below. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.